and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10, I'm Rebecca Felgate and today we're discussing the top 10 most annoying tweets of all time. Get ready, cause these are just bah. Coming in at number 10, we have the gif of doom. I love that you can easily tweet a gif these days, but how frustrating is this little menace from Archlect? Tweeted out on March the 27th, 2016, this bitch never ends. It is hard to tell where you end and this gif begins, and it's kind of sending me into a spiral of doom. I hate this tweet, but 2,467 people liked it. Ugh. Okay, coming in at number nine, we have too many hashtags. Okay, I really get that people love a good hashtag, but really, you'd have thought that the need to not sound like a robot or a total dick would be paramount in a tweet. But no. Innocuous as it may seem, this is a really annoying tweet from a marketing company. I'm gonna read it to you. Helping hashtag small biz hashtag entrepreneur hashtag authors hashtag designers hashtag freelancers to hashtag promote and hashtag growth your hashtag business or your hashtag book hashtag music hashtag album. <laughs> like mate, why? Why? You don't even sound like a person. Like, you sound like a hashtag idiot and your tweet doesn't even make sense. So. Also, I wouldn't get me started on the hashtag so blessed. We can talk about that later. Bomb. Okay, people who take to Twitter to complain are the absolute worst, like Cher. Her Pinterest rant is one example coming in at number eight. In May 2015, Cher tweeted, I hate hashtag Pinterest. It's most f***ing obnoxious thing in the world, including teabaggers. Was looking for Indian jewelry and it held me hostage for an hour. She also has taken to Twitter to decry Twizzlers. Twizzlers, everyone loves Twizzlers. Cher's Twitter in general is a bit of a state blesser. I enjoy her as a human, but on Twitter, she's a troll. Worse than complainers are rude ass celebrities, or basically anyone acting like a little brat on Twitter. These people, headed up by Aaron Carter, are coming in at number seven. Anyone remember Aaron Carter? I mean, I guess I do, like, barely. Apparently someone is still carting him around in a limo for some reason, and he is really ungracious about it. Shortly after the Boston bombings in 2013, Aaron Carter showed no life perspective as he tweeted, I need a long snap, and this limo driver is making me sick. I just yelled at him. Oh boo hoo Aaron, that does sound like a real nightmare. Another plague upon Twitter is the slew of food pictures we are force fed. I get taking a nice picture of something I paid good money for in a restaurant, but sometimes tweeting food snaps can go too far, especially when they're awful. Yep, that's right, are you listening here at number six, Martha Stewart? I enjoy a bit of Martha, but her food snaps really tug at my gag reflex. Remember the instant with the iceberg wedge and the Russian salad dressing, and that whole mess with the sloppy French onion soup? Why did we need to see it? I don't know. I also think that it was more than her plate that was doing some passing during Passover, because that meal looked rank. Coming in at number five, there is nothing worse than a microblogged humble brag. Okay, this is so awful that it made me full on laugh out loud. We have a tweet from entrepreneur Cheryl Yo that really sums up the kind of annoying humble brag I'm talking about. She tweeted, I just did something very selfless, but more importantly, it was genuine and I know it means a lot to the person in the long run. Hashtag so worth it. Like babe, if it was genuine and selfless, then there really is no need to tweet about it, is there? Similarly annoying tweets will include daily fitness or weight loss brags, or of course brags about how great someone's vacation is with the mandatory snap of a hollowed out pineapple held up to a crystal clear blue sea. Once again, hashtag so blessed. Just so blessed. I guess moving on from the irritating side of annoying to the absolute vile side of get this troll off Twitter annoying, we have awful bad taste jokes. One horrendous example comes from former CBS writer David Leavitt. He, in the wake of the awful terror attack at an Ariana Grande concert in Manchester, wrote this. Multiple confirmed fatalities at Manchester Arena. The last time I listened to Ariana Grande, I almost died too. Yeah, I mean, kids did actually die, so. Suffice to say, a lot of Twitter users were irritated at the poor timing of his joke, while others were downright outraged. Oh! 
Hey there, we've got bigots at number three. You've gotta love a good bigot on Twitter. I mean, actually you really don't, but you certainly have to laugh at them, because if not, the irritation might just get too much. One of my favourite Twitter bigots is the somewhat vapid Paul Joseph Watson, aka Prison Planet. There's a lot that can be said about this aggressively opinionated chap, but let's just save ourselves the time and energy and talk about one of his more irritating tweets. So side note, feminism is a belief that men and women deserve equal opportunities. Opportunities. That's all. Some macho, macho, macho chaps like Paul, however, seem to see it as an attack on their manliness and their rights to be a dude, which it isn't. It's literally just about equality. So one day, the hashtag how to spot a feminist was trending. This is because the internet was trying to make a point that there really is no stereotype for people who want equality. However, old matey boy Paul had to have his two cents. He tweeted, hashtag how to spot a feminist. Usually fat and ugly, always inherently unlikable, supremely hypercritical, snarky, annoying, deluded, intransigent. I think one person's response said it all. Hashtag how to spot a twat. Usually spends his time on Twitter trolling women, minorities and the other. Spends rest of time wanking. I'll add that he's probably wanking over women because women are only good for one thing. Am I right, Paul? Worse than bigots on Twitter, we have racists. Have you ever noticed how racists are almost always pretty darn stupid? Case in point with this tweet at number two. Justine Sacco tweeted, going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. Babe, babe, no. I honestly think that contracting the HIV virus would be the least of Justine's worries here. Suffice to say that Justine did meet the full wrath of the internet. She lost her job and people were so annoyed that they sent her death threats, which obviously is not cool at all. Finally at number one, the problem with Twitter is that it allows so many fools to tweet statements posed as facts, when in reality, announcing something in writing in 140 characters or less has no bearing on its truth or reliability. Wait, what? Did anyone tell the press this? That's right, the President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, is the biggest conspiracy theorist out there in the world. In one of the most factually blind and annoying tweets ever posted, in 2012, Trump tweeted, The concept of global warming was created by and for the Chinese in order to make US manufacturing non-competitive. I mean, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. I'm pretty certain that the only thing China can take credit for here is making Trump's Make America Great Again hats. And to be honest, the annoying thing here is that most climate deniers won't be able to see the irony in Trump's apparent concern over non-competitive manufacturing only to outsource the factory work to China. Boo. So guys, that was the top 10 most annoying tweets of all time. If you want to discover how irritating my tweets are, then you can follow me at Rebecca Felgate. But for now, if you like this video, make sure you give it a good thumbs up, share it with a friend, and stay subscribed to Most Amazing Top 10. And hey, leave me some comments down below and I'll try and respond to a few. See you next time. Hashtag so blessed.